Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rise to join in the singing of the end.
You have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Grant us so to firmly believe in your Son, Jesus, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 25th Sunday after Pentecost is from 1 Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in the introduction and meaning of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, what does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true Father and that we are his true children, so that with all boldness and confidence we may ask him as dear children, ask their dear Father. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 9. For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters the holy places every year, with blood not his own. For then he would have to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all for the end of the ages, to be put away, to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. synagogues in the places of honor and feasts, who devour widows' houses 
and for a pretense make long prayers, they will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of the day.
two small copper coins into the temple treasury may just as well have cast two large stone tablets onto our heads this morning. Given the choice between her non-verbal sermon that day and a tongue lashing from the prophet Moses, I'm sure I know which one you would choose. Neither one of them leaves you unscathed, nor me. The effect is the same. Both, the words of Moses, and those two small copper coins tossed into the offering plate in the temple brand the word guilty on the skin that thinly veils our self-seeking, self-preserving, attention-loving hearts. Beware the scribes, Jesus warns. For they are unlike the poor widow. They love attention. They love the applause. They love the places of honor. And though they blush in fake humility, know that in their heart of hearts they giggle like a schoolgirl for the love of the limelight. Yes? Beware of the scribes, for the scribes are in you as well. If only we would see it in ourselves as you see it in everybody else. If only we would be quick enough to point out our own self-seeking, attention-driven human attention-driven struggles as we were our neighbors. At least then we would rock to be quicker to repentance. If you follow along with that sentence, you're better off than I am this morning. Perhaps we would blush for real. Perhaps this, we were as quick to point out everyone else's sin in ourselves, we would blush for our own good. And maybe if we would shift our eyes up a little bit from all of the navel-gazing that we do, you'd spy the word guilty written in ashes on our fallen hearts and foreheads. We've all prayed those words, give us this day our daily bread. Maybe you've already prayed those words once or twice this morning before you even came to church. But we have all prayed those words, give us this day our daily bread, as emptily as we can recite our own phone numbers, rattling it off the tip of our tongue. For we all know that it's our work. We all know it's our nine to fives. It's our 30 years of service that has placed bread onto our tables, tires on our cars, and dust-covered tchotchkes that line our shelves. But you're still trying to figure out which grandchild you're going to be able to pawn them off on after you're dead. And your grandchildren are fighting on which one doesn't have to have them in their home. We've become prideful over all that we have. And we are more afraid of losing the things that we have than giving thanks to God for the blessings he's poured out on us. And so we hold on to it with a grip that would rival any baby's hold on the bottle. We proudly sing the hymn, We give thee but thine own, 
but not this morning. But we are afraid that if we provide a little bit more for church than we've done over the last few years, we might not be able to buy another ornament at Bronner's before Christmas. And yet, even for all the evil people in the world, God still provides them their daily bread. Repent. You know God and His promises. You know that no matter what happens in this world, He has promised to provide you with daily bread. Now, that daily bread, of course, may not necessarily be up to the standard that you have set for yourself. But whether it is an $8 Starbucks, and yes, I know that's the cost of a small one now, or whether it's a $1.50 small coffee over at the donut shop, both of them will heat you up just as well. The kingdom of heaven is not like the Pharisees. It's not like the professionals. The kingdom of heaven is like the poor widow that you too may enter. For it is not a kingdom that comes by observation. It comes not by observation but by participation, by partaking of that which belongs to another. Someone with 20-20 vision, which on this side of heaven I will never achieve, sees nothing of the kingdom of God because it is hidden from human sight. The fullness of God is hidden under the antithesis it's hidden under that widow's empty little purse after she had dumped her two copper coins into the offering plate. It is seen in the emptiness of Lazarus's stomach, the emptiness of the widow of Zarephus oil and flour containers that barely had enough to provide for her and her son before Elijah came with God's word. the emptiness of the one who emptied himself on the cross and took on the form of a servant and was made in your likeness. There is no loose looking with your eyes for the kingdom of God out in the world. Don't look for it in the perfect pastor. Don't look for it in the perfect congregation. And don't look for it when a congregational meeting can make it through without some kind of bickering or complaining. And pat ourselves on the back and say, wow, how good did we do? But seek the kingdom of God hidden in those two copper coins dropped into the temple treasury noticed only by one that day only by Jesus as the greatest gift put in on that day not because she gave the most or because she gave the least because she gave in faith. In the faith that the Lord would provide for her her daily bread. She believed that the Lord could give her what she needed for the next day, and the day after, and the day after that. The kingdom of God is hidden here too. 
It's hidden in that quarter size or for Carol, that nickel size drop of bread that we place into your palms. Affirmed by Jesus is the greatest gift that could be put into your body today. It is hidden beneath the word of the Lord that gives what they say, like the widow and her son believed in Zarephath. The kingdom of God is hidden in that naked king who is robed only in the crimson of his blood and thrown upon a tree, dripping into his father's treasury, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood to pay the price for your sins. Every drop shed for you. And when his blood in the coffer rings, the angels in heaven sang. And so do we. Evermore praising him and saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. For Jesus in his poverty put into his passion all he owned, all he had to live on, that he would make you rich. Yes, worthy is he. Believe it, for his sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and protect your heart and mind in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. I now invite you to please rise as we join in the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you send your Holy Spirit to sanctify and keep your people in the true faith. Preserve us from falsehood and false doctrine, and curb and restrain all error and all evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, you send the Holy Spirit to call your people to faith. Graciously keep us in the divine word, and send out faithful laborers into your harvest. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Gracious God, grant us faith like that of the widow, who gave her last two coins, trusting that you would care for her every need. Deliver us from all hypocrisy, and give us a genuine faith joyful piety, and cheerful giving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, we thank you for the gathering of these saints in this congregation, and we pray that you would bless all her members, and especially to hear our prayers this week on behalf of Bonnie, Terry, Charlotte, Kenneth, and Grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you call us to honor the authority set over us. Look with favor upon those who hold office in this land, especially our president and Congress, the judges and magistrates, and Gretchen, Garland, Kevin, Joe, and Alicia. Preserve them from evil, and bless them in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, your, same, your Son came not to be served, but to serve, especially to serve those who are ignored and despised. Comfort the afflicted and troubled, the sick, especially Roger, Donna, Mike, Kathy, Laura, Mary Ann, Mary, Larry, Jennifer, Paul, Vera, Norma, Vicki, Fred, Gary, Mike, Richard, Peggy, and all who have asked for our prayers, and those that we bring before you silently now.
be with all who mourn, and all those who are in any need. Keep them steadfast in the true faith, and bring their sufferings to an end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, great repentance and faith to grant repentance and faith to all who receive our Lord's body and blood today, that in the unity of a true confession, they may receive it for the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own High Priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship with the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. with you. Christ our Lord, 
who made this cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you prepared for us through Jesus Christ, and grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took breath, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us in the same faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We join in our closing hymn. Opportunity to stop by the bake sale yesterday and Friday um, at the Village of East Harbor. We have some goodies that are available um, to purchase this morning for a donation. They're found out on the table in the narthex. Um, as far as I know, 
Joe didn't help himself to all of them during the service. <laughs> Anyways, um, so as far as I know, there's still plenty back there on the, the card table in the narthex, so um, please help yourself um, to those for a uh, small donation. Just a, also a big thank you to all of you who worked, who prepared, who set up and cleaned up and baked and did all sorts of things. For some of you who were the taste testers, I'm sure in your homes, praise be to God for you that I didn't get called to the hospital for any of you. Um, so thank you as well. Um, yeah, I'm all full of that this morning, Lisa. So. <laughs> um, anyways, so thank you for all of that hard work um, that you put in to, to make the bake sale a uh, success again. Um, just a couple of other things to remind you about coming up in the near future. Of course, our congregational meeting for setting the work plan for 2025 <coughs> comes up on the last Sunday. It's not in here yet. I know it was probably supposed to go in the bulletin this week, but hey, that's what you get when you have me as your secretary. But anyway, so... <laughs> um, so just a reminder, that's the last Sunday of November which of course means that we also have our Thanksgiving Eve service, um, Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock. And that also means that Advent's right around the corner. Um, so please remember the first Sunday in December and then the first Wednesday in December will be the beginning of our Advent season. We will again, like we did last year, have noon and 7 o'clock services. So if you're unable to make 7 o'clock, please come and join us at noon. And if you're not able to make it at noon um, and are able to drive and get here in the evening, please join us then. Um, and I think the plan is to still have dinners before the 7 o'clock service, as far as I know. I haven't heard anything different, so please keep that in mind. Also, you may have noticed in my sermon a little bit of zealousness this morning. Um, it's one of those texts that sometimes as a pastor, you just, I don't know, there's something about it. But I do not give financial advice, even in my sermon, even if it seems so. So, of course, God has blessed you with what he has blessed you with, and he has entrusted you to make those good decisions. So if you enjoy the $8 coffee, buy the $8 coffee. If you enjoy the $1.50 coffee, enjoy the $1.50 coffee. Hopefully that covers all the rest of it if I misspoke at all. So, don't think there's anything else. Any other announcements this morning? Linda. Linda and then Carol. And me. And Pam. Linda, Carol, Pam. I would like to point out to everyone, uh, like okay. in your mailboxes last week was the announcement for the poinsettia orders for the deadline is very early this year. It's next Sunday. So if you want uh, to order poinsettias for Christmas for during the altar in church, we need to have your order blank and your money turned in by next Sunday. There are some additional sheets out in back if you did not, for some reason, get yours out on one of the tables. I think it's the Narthex table that's against the um, there's a few out there, but next Sunday is the deadline. The fourth was wanted earlier there. Apparently, apparently. All right, Carol. Carol's was taken care of by Linda. Pam. Carol's all set. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to let the ladies know that for the Bethlehem breakfast, we still have six seats open at our table. So if anybody's interested, I still have another week and a half that I can pick up tickets. So you can see me today, see me next Sunday, but then that's it. So it's okay. a wonderful morning. So think about it. Okay. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I want to express my gratefulness and thanks to the people who uh, participated in the Luther Fest uh, last Sunday. Um, Claire members Keith and Linda and Doug and Vera and for Kathy and Pastor for coming to the service to support us and uh, we we had a we had a, a lovely time praising God uh, for the 500th birthday of the Lutheran hymn. Um, it's very very moving. So yep. thank you very much, everybody, for all your efforts and hard work with that. Okay.
you. Anything else? All right. Stay dry. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.